Hello everyone, this is Pradesilaos, also known as Prod. In this video I want to tell you about the news that I have published, uh, the book that guides you through the process of uh, reproducing my dot .files on a uh, Debian 10 Buster, the upcoming release of, uh, the upcoming stable release of the Debian, the GNU Linux distro. I have published the book on my website, it is available free of charge and freed from traditional copyright restrictions. It is uh, libre, um, and the, the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license. So the book is available at uh, protesilas.com forward slash PDFD, which stands for Prots Dots for Debian. This is a beta release because the uh, Debian 10 Buster has not been uh, published yet. So I am labeling this as a, as a beta as I might be making some uh, changes down the line in, in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, Buster is expected to be released in the summer of 2019. However, Debian is a community-led uh, project. It's, uh, it's uh, volunteers who are contributing their free time. So they will uh, publish Buster whenever it is uh, deemed ready. So it could, it could go further into the year, not necessarily in the summer. Um, so what I can do now is just uh, walk you through the, um, my custom desktop session. This is uh, centered around the Binary Space Partitioning Window Manager, BSPWM. So this is a tiling window manager. And uh, I have a video about that, so I will not go, I will not delve into the specifics too much. But a tiling window manager basically uh, presents windows as um, tiles, so as boxes that are placed next to each other, rather than the um, traditional way, what you are probably used to, which is the stacking paradigm uh, of windows uh, being placed on top of each other. So as we see here, the more windows that we spawn, uh, BSPWM manages them as tiles. So this is as a window spiral. So the more I produce, the more the spiral moves inward. And you see here we have this. And uh, I have a video showcasing the basic operation so you can expand or contract the split between the windows. So for example here, you can do this one and this. It depends on whether the window is a child of the node or um, that's something that you will have to figure out yourself, a child or a parent of the node. So for example, here you can split downward and upward and uh, leftward. Uh, BSBWM has gaps between windows uh, built in, so I have a key binding which uh, allows you to change the gaps dynamically, the size of the gaps dynamically, or you can switch to presets. I have some predefined presets. Well, that's the point of a preset. I have some presets. Um, if you, once you access the custom desktop session, if you press super, which is the Windows key, super and F1 or super and home, I will press that now, it will spawn a new window. This is a floating window, by the way. It will spawn a new window running the program called less. And inside of it, you will have a complete guide to the most common uh, key bindings that uh, control uh, the custom desktop session, that control BSPWM specifically, and some other uh, extras. So, uh, for example, here, super and return, it will open a terminal running the Tmux session. I will go into that in a minute. Super and Q will close the focused window and the focused node. And uh, yeah, you can go through this and uh, have a look at this. All this is documented extensively in my book, PDFD, Prots Dots for Debian, uh, and also in the source code. The source code of my dot .files is uh, extensively documented, so if you have any questions, you will probably find the answers therein. Um, so let me open now, let me press now super and the return key, super and enter. 
So this uh, will bring up a terminal running uh, the default Tmax session. I also have a video, if you check my backlog, I have a video on Tmax as well. So again, I will not go into the specifics. Um, in the book, I have a chapter where I, where I tell you about the basic key bindings of Tmax just to get you started. So Tmax is a terminal multiplexer. So what it does is that it, uh, it controls, it does basically what BSPWM is for Windows, Tmax is for terminals. So, so it will create tiles with terminals basically. And then you can have different windows. So if you see below, I have window number one, window number two, window number three, and each window contain, contains panes. These are called panes, these splits. And um, each pane is a pseudo terminal. It's a terminal. And each, each window contains uh, many of those uh, pseudo terminals. And then uh, each session, so this is the default session, controls, uh, contains windows. So it's sessions, windows, panes. And uh, I explain in the, in the book why Tmax is a tool that you must absolutely familiarize your, yourself with. It is a superb tool. It makes your life uh, as a terminal power user much easier. You become uh, much more potent uh, in your usage of the terminal emulator. And of course, because you, you can spawn uh, any kind of uh, terminal uh, I am with relative ease. So, for example, I can I, I am here in my dot files. This is, let, let me close this just a second. I am in the, the present working directory is my dot files, and I have configured Tmax so that the new pane always opens up in the present working directory. So again, the new pane is at dot files. So, for example, I could uh, run git log one line so it will show me a thing here by the way i have an alias for this glo so it will show me the git log and then i can open here something to read for example and then i could also you get the idea by the way v is a is a bash alias for vim uh, and i have well, ah, copy so yeah Tmax is a powerful tool, and uh, I explain in the book why that is the case. Suffice to say that it has made my life easier as a Vim user because uh, it has eliminated uh, the need to rely on external functionality uh, in the means of plugins um, to get things done. So, for example, in Vim, I would have plugins to control, to check the status of Git, or to navigate the file system uh, and stuff like that. But you don't really need that. You don't need to turn Vim into a, into a, into a bad operating system just so you can get things done. You can rely on standard Unix utilities um, with the help of uh, multiplexing to uh, make your workflow more efficient, to make your work better. So we have uh, BSPWM, which controls Windows. We have Tmax, which controls terminals. And I explain in the book uh, everything that relates to every aspect of my custom desktop session. Now I want to show you uh, first um, a few things about the panel. So the thing you see here at the top. This is a program called Lemon Bar. And uh, the way Lemon Bar works is uh, that it prints whatever information you feed into it. So by default, Lemon Bar is just a blank uh, slate. It contains nothing at all. So I have written a script. So this is in my um, bin directory. Um, I have written a script. It's the melon panel. I explain in the description why it's called like that. It's a funny name, I agree. It, weird, if you will. Anyhow, um, uh, Melon Panel is uh, used to retrieve information from the system and print it on the bar. 
For example, uh, this uh, bash function here controls uh, what you are seeing in the battery module. So it prints the status of the battery. This one here is the status of the music server. Um, what's it called? MPD, music, music player daemon. So it shows the status of MPD, the speaker volume, the date, and this N here is the um, keyboard layout. So because I switch between Greek and uh, English, US QWERTY, I need to have an indicator over there. I explain in the book how you can configure this to your liking. And here on the left, we have the BSBWM uh, module. Um, the workspace that has focus, the one that is active, is denoted by um, a, a, a um, cyan background. So it's uh, filled in with color. Whereas other workspaces which are occupied by a certain one or more windows but which do not have focus are like this. I have a lighter shade of the background and are underlined. So if I go to workspace 5, I have the web browser in and it displays my website with the link to the book I am discussing. Back to uh, workspace one. Let's have a look at a few of the of the things that um, the module displays. If I enter monocle view, this is a, this is a way of BSBWM to display windows in maxim in their maximized state. So this is denoted by the letter M here. Monocle controls the layout of the of the entire desktop. So any new windows that will spawn will automatically be maximized and will come on top of the currently focused node. So if I open a blank terminal, oh, sorry, because I had capitals. What happened? Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. So if I open a blank terminal, it opens up on top of the existing one. So another terminal, the others go to the background. So if I exit monocle view, it's a toggle. I can see the other windows that I spawned. I accidentally spawned a, a couple of TMAX sessions. So now that I am not in monocle, I am back in the standard uh, tiling uh, mode. I can see windows next, next to each other and I can toggle the monocle whenever I wish with a single key binding. It's super and M and that's about the monocle. Um, the, other, the other dash here is about the node flags. Uh, it's better if you read uh, man bspc man bspc and uh, search for flags you will see that it has it explains them here just a quick uh, demo so if i assign to this node the locked flag i see here that it is locked and the locked means that i cannot kill it uh, with the standard uh, BSPC command that kills Windows. So if I press super and Q, which is the command that normally kills Windows, it has no effect whatsoever. Whereas if I do this on this specific node, which, has, which does not have the locked uh, flag, the window is killed without any further notice. Here it does not work, here it works read more on the node flags so I can uh, skip this part. So here we have the status of the of the desktop and here we have the node flags. And th that's basically it. If you attach uh, a second an external display to your um, hardware, uh, BSPWM will display them here. So if you assign, the way I have it is that I assign the first three workspaces to the LVDS display and the second ones to the VGA display, to the one that is uh, connected to the VGA port. Actually, it's vice versa. VGA has one to three and LVDS has four to six. So what BSPWM does here is that it writes uh, the name of the monitor. So it will have VGA one, then a, a space, and then the three workspaces, and then the status of the desktop and the node flags. And then it will do the same for the next monitor. So it will have the name again, the number of workspaces, the named workspaces, 
and their uh, status uh, flags. Not to bother you too much with that, it's better to experience it yourself and uh, get the hang of it. I explain in the book how you can configure Melon panel. Um, of course, you need to have some knowledge of bash scripting. Anyhow, this is uh, targeted at experienced uh, GNU Linux users. Even though uh, you can, as a, new, as a newbie, if you are a newbie, you, can, uh, you are most welcome to give it a try. I was a newbie not so long ago myself. Uh, provided you understand who this book for, uh, who this book is for, and uh, you are willing to put in the effort, right? What else? So another another key aspect of my custom desktop session is the Tempus themes. This is a collection of themes uh, that are designed that I have designed um, to fill in a perceived void in the theming space, which is um, accessibility themes that have good color contrast and uh, that work for the vast majority of people because most themes are out there um, uh, fail miserably uh, in that specific regard. So what I will do now, and uh, this is something that you must know, is that I will switch to a light theme. But first, let me, let me show some content. Let me have something here just to see what's going on. And let's uh, open the re no actually let's open some code so that you can see also the live reload effect that I have. Uh, let's see something nice, something that has a few colors. Yeah. So let's let's uh, no. So now I am switching to a light theme. If your monitor presents white as too bright, make sure to lower your brightness a bit, uh, or else it might uh, stutter you. So I invoke an interface, which is a D menu interface, which um, with a single uh, key binding. And this brings up the entire collection of my themes, the Tempest themes. So some of these are light themes and some of these are dark themes. So now I will just, I will just switch to um, a light theme, this one. You can switch using the arrow keys or uh, Emacs bindings. So um, if you know Emacs bindings, it's the ones that are applied to the terminal as well. Control A, Control E, Control N, etc. Or you can type. So for example, if I type, I sort, I filter the list. So I will now use day, Tempus day. So everything, the Vim session, everything has changed colors. I haven't done anything. Uh, the, the notification daemon has changed and let's go to see Firefox it should have changed as well indeed if you remember it was a dark theme let me switch back to the dark theme here so that you can see how it was we were using the classic the classic scheme before you see that it inherited uh, a dark uh, theme the notification daemon as well everything here is dark as we want it to be Let's go back to Firefox here. Let's let's invoke another um, command I have, another uh, D menu implementation. I call this Flatpak menu, which, as you can imagine, uh, only displays Flatpak applications. I want this to be separate from the rest of my of my um, executables because uh, Flatpak is something that I use on a case by case basis. So let's uh, open this application. You will see that I have it so that it tells you what it is doing. Flatpak run org.gnome.clocks and it presents the icon. The reason I am bringing this up is because I want you to see how it also live reloads Flatpak themes, which is something that took a bit of effort to get it to work. So we switch back to Tempest Day there it is. The flat pack theme is light as well. Everything is light. And uh, what also changes is the background. You will have to assign the background yourself. I explained that in the dot files. You will have to uh, define it uh, in, in the pictures folder or you can modify the script and define it wherever you will. Now I am switching back to the classic, Tempest Classic. This, by the way, is the default wallpaper, the defo what you will be seeing by default. 
uh, I modified the there, there is an image I believe which says uh, where there is a shell there is a way something like that and I modified it a bit uh, and wrote this little thing um, I'm trying to think if there is something else uh, sorry by the way for uh, rambling because this is not scripted at all so uh, I'm just coming up with, thim with um, things as I go uh, the choice of fonts. Maybe I should discuss the choice of fonts a bit. What you are seeing here is hack, the typeface hack. Hack is a um, derivative of um, déjà vu, the déjà vu family, déjà vu sans mono specifically. And the reason I prefer hack over uh, its um, um, ancestor, if you will, is that um, it has some uh, quality refinements in some characters that make them more distinct. The hyphen is a bit better, the tilde, um, the, the, the height of the numerals and some minor things. If you switch back and forth between déjà vu and uh, hack, you will see what I am talking about. Anyhow, hack is the default uh, and it is the default because uh, it is the it is a workhorse. It, it performs admirably in, in a number of contexts. I've never, uh, I've never experienced any kind of gotchas, you know, where uh, the font works well in general, but there is this one little area where it uh, underperforms. Uh, Hack has none of that. It is consistent, and I like it because of that. It's not the most uh, fancy font. It may not be the most beautiful one, but it's definitely the one that works uh, best, uh, at least in my extensive uh, tests, I would say. I have used um, bitmap fonts. I have used the uh, fonts that I have uh, uh, downloaded from various sources, um, all sorts of fonts. Source Code Pro, Fira, Fira Mono, Fira Code, Mononoki, um, Input Mono, uh, Iosefka and all sorts of fonts. I have tried everything and I think uh, Hack is the best there is. Um, it's, uh, it's great because it has a good contrast between the letter forms. It, uh, it is not too light so you can read it. It's easy to read. It's easy to read when you are working with a light theme. That's very important. That's the one area where Terminus, which is a bitmap font, uh, fails completely. It is bad at displaying, uh, at working with light themes. It's bad because the letter forms create a certain halo effect where um, the area around the letter form is a bit blurry. It's like it's uh, light coming out of it, so you cannot really see it that well. And also the colors, the, when you're working with light themes, the colors are practically indecipherable. You cannot tell them apart. Whereas with hack, um, colors work nice uh, even in very light themes the letter forms are clear uh, very considerate and this is of course also because of the deja vu heritage right that's also an excellent font um, and I have a comprehensive list of, of rules by the way in uh, my font config let me let's close this a bit and I'm not sure if uh, this point size is, um, you can read what's going on here. I'm, let me increase it a bit. What do we have here? Yeah, inside conf D, I have all sorts of uh, rules. It's, uh, I explained this in the chapter about the fonts and uh, you can see what is going on. Uh, I should say at this point that um, by default, I am using hack as the monospaced font. Actually, let's see this. Um, so the, um, the way I set the preferable fonts is that I am for each generic family. So the generic families are serif, sans serif and the monospace. There are others, but we don't care about those fantasy or whatever. So the serif, the default serif, uh, should be not a serif. If that is not installed, move on to the next one. Otherwise, use déjà vu serif. Because I don't is install either of those, déjà vu is the default. Similarly here, it's Roboto the first preference, second one is not a sans, 
Liberation sans the third one and Deja Vu sans further as the default. And in Monospace I have Hack and then Monoid. Monoid is a very good font at point size 9. It's a bit, uh, the letter forms are a bit lighter than Hack. And this is the area, this is the reason why I prefer Hack because Monoid uh, exhibits to a lesser degree uh, the same problems as with bitmap fonts when it comes to light themes because it's uh, it's very light it's very thin the letter forms are very thin um, so yeah you will read about that what else do I have that you could uh, check um, maybe I should see the contents of the book yeah so ah yeah I should say of course that my dot files are controlled with um, the program called GNU Stow, Man Stow. And I explain in the book how you can use this program. Basically, what you do is what this program does is that it creates symlinks to the parent of the present working directory. Because the doc files are in the home, are an extension of the home directory, so if you see the tilde here, it's uh, this is a home a forward slash my username forward slash dot files that's what it means so if i run stow it will create symlinks to the target of stow to the home directory so it, and that's why if you see here for example have a look let's let's use this tool by the way tree af bin maybe i should decrease the font size a bit so I run this command now and it shows me bin and then bin again. So this is something that can confuse you at first. The first bin here, maybe let's also, you can see here, this bin here is not actually a directory. This is a, a stow package. So what you do with this is you tell stow to use the contents of this package and create lim symlinks to the contents. So this can become clearer now. If you run stow on the bin package, it will take this directory and its contents, and then this directory and its contents, and symlink them to the home uh, directory. So this will become home bin dots menu, home bin flatback menu, etc. home uh, dot local share okay you get the point I explained this in the book this is in the chapter about the chapter 5 set up my dot files and base configs you will see that as well um, what else yeah I explain a bit why you should choose the mate desktop environment as the default uh, option when you are installing uh, Debian 10 and um, I, I document the reasons why you should do that. Um, I won't go into that right now. Is there something else that you would need to know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, some closing notes. Um, why I am writing this book? Why did I bother writing this book? And um, not provide you with an install.sh, an install script so that you could just uh, copy the script, run it, and uh, it would do everything for you, and then bam, you have a, a custom desktop session running BSPWM. The reason is, and this is something I touch upon in my book that I address, the reason is that I want you, who are uh, attempting to reproduce my custom desktop session, to have a, an intimate understanding, or at least to have an idea of what is going on, of what it is that you are uh, installing on your system. Because uh, you, might be, you might need to make uh, adaptations, either to your uh, aesthetic preferences, uh, preferences or to your hardware requirements. Things might not, might not work as expected or, or as I have configured them to work on my system because these are my dot files after all. So by essentially forcing you to read the book, I protect myself from uh, questions that would be easy to answer like uh, how do I edit the, the key bindings for example. If you read the book, you know how to do that. Or how do I install the, 
the configs on my system. If you read the book, you know that you must use uh, GNU Stow, etc., etc. This is not to me trying to be condescending on any or anything. It's just that because of the nature of um, the the personalized nature of dot files and the dot file management, it's better for you to know that these are my customizations and your mileage may your mileage may vary. Um, I guess that's co that covers it. Um, yeah, the link to my book is protesilas.com. Protesilas is my dot com is my website. Protesilas.com forward slash pdfd. And the final notice is that pdfd does not read directly from my dot files. My dot files I should uh, link as well. It's it's better if I open. A terminal and I can write this. I have a, a Vim, uh, how do they call them, abbreviation. So it's gitlab.com forward slash protesilos forward slash dot files. And as I said, uh, my book does not read from my dot files directly. Instead, it uh, only con the, it reads from a separate repo called code for pdfd cpdfd which contains the last uh, the latest uh, fixed release of my dot files and the latest fixed release of my dot files uh, is uh, tagged accordingly so i have tags and you can if you if you want you can always uh, use git you can clone the my dot files is repo and use git to see exactly what i have i in general this is a general uh, rule about everything i do i try to document each step and uh, guide you through the process either my rationale or uh, what i was thinking or what i was trying to do yeah but in general, uh, PDFD does not read from my dot files because my dot files is the place where I do all sorts of experiments. This is a, a rolling release, as it were. It's an unstable uh, branch. What you should be using is PDFD and CPDFD, code for PDFD. And I guess that covers it. Thank you very much for your attention. Remember that this is a, a beta phase a beta phase and uh, that I will be officially publishing the book as it were I will be we will be exiting beta only once uh, Debian 10 Buster has been officially released and I have reviewed the book from start to finish which should be in the days uh, after the official release that's all for now folks thank you very much for your attention